What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here on this Thursday, uh, the first day of December, December 1st, 2022. It's about 11.55 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 1.7 there on the big island of Hawaii uh, with a continued eruption there of Mauna Loa. Things still uh, looking pretty active there in that area. Also still seeing quite a bit of movement down here across the Kermadec Trench, some uh, deep activity into the region. Also, continual activity there around the Tapo Volcano. Uh, I wanna kick off there real quick just with the latest uh, drums here. This is recorded seismograph stations here. Uh, this is updated. Here's Tapo Volcano, uh, still continuing to show quite a bit of seismic activity throughout the night and this morning time period here. Uh, latest update here as you see um, on the map here so uh, no major earthquake activity but definitely still continued uh, movement there around the Taupo volcano very active uh, overnight and this morning as well uh, looking at the GeoNet servers here for New Zealand uh, where Ta Taupo is located Kind of see this cluster of quakes right here uh, underneath this beautiful lake but uh, man uh, deadly scenario if this thing were ever to pop off uh, last eruption was uh, 1800 years ago i kind of covered this a little bit more last night but as you can see still quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, kicking up here in the region of Tao Po, and i will continue to monitor that as well we do have a seismograph station uh, somewhat near the Taupo volcano area. It's called Black Stump Farm. Um, I know it's, it's kind of a weird name. It doesn't say Taupo on it, but it's uh, within the vicinity of that uh, super volcano there on the North Island, New Zealand. So that's what it's called. And for now, that's the one that I have to use to monitor uh, some of the activity there uh, around that volcano. All right, uh, let's go ahead and check out the activity here. On the USGS map, of course, that 5.4 uh, earthquake. Um, it's off the map now, but you can see they still had some activity here. 4.1 uh, coming in yesterday. It was just a mix of um, um, a lot of earthquake activity. 5.4 and a 4.1. Those are the only ones here that the USGS was showing, but there was a lot more taking place there at that volcano. Uh, further upstream here along the Kermadec Trench, still seeing some activity and uh, some deeper movement as well overnight near the fiji islands area 4.5 at uh, about 528 kilometers deep there pretty deep activity and um let's see here most of the activity today uh situated it seems as though right around the vanuatu area getting a little cluster of quakes here in the mid four range pretty shallow earthquake activity uh, just offshore of one of these islands that's uh, well to the southeast of Port Villa area it looks like uh, either way seismically active in this region over the past couple days and obviously uh, in certain areas with volcanoes in that zone um, over here around the Indonesia area let's go ahead and zoom in here see what we got for recent activity a lot of this here is from yesterday we did have one 4.9 in the Papua New Guinea area down here and uh, the majority of that there from yesterday not a whole lot popping off up here along the northwestern segment of the pacific ring of fire in fact these two earthquakes here from last night no subsequent activity here overnight uh, according to the usgs and a quick look here on the globe uh, pretty much confirms that not seeing a whole lot of activity up around this area of the pacific plate but definitely throughout the indonesia area and um, big time throughout the kermadec trench and the Tonga Trench area, just a pretty uh, large cluster of quakes down there. Right up into the Alaska area, the Aleutian Trench still showing some movement here. Looks like we got a couple, uh, at least a 4.8 coming in about 4 o'clock in the morning along the uh, Fox Islands area. Uh, and also a 4.1 came in last night here, a little bit further to the west. So a little bit of uptick uh, today, it looks like, continuing along this area of the plate boundary. Not a, not a whole lot, though. Just a little bit uh, and some movement outside 
of the Cook Inlet area. The Trident Volcano kind of backed off here a little bit with earth, earthquake activity. Uh, these swarms kind of come and go right now. It looks like it's dying off just a little bit there uh, throughout the region. Let's see what we got here for the uh, Pacific Northwest. Aside from a lot of snow and rain, uh, not a whole lot of activity here outside of Seattle. Got a 1.4, but um, aside from that, things pretty mellow across the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Northern California, one earthquake here we seen last night coming in. Actually, that was late afternoon time period, I believe. It looks like about 12 o'clock near Millville. Aside from that, uh, cooler, rainier day here in California. Picked up uh, just about half an inch here at my place of rain. We got a series of storm systems coming in um, over the next 10 days or so. Looking at the earthquake activity, um, north of the Garlock Fault shear zone has been somewhat quiet, but once you hit down south here, we did see a three-pointer come in. Let me bring this up. A 3.8 uh, just off the Elsinore Fault system, a little further segment, uh, or a little further south here along that uh, branch. Uh, we did we were looking at a little bit of us uh, warming up here oh, a couple nights back and uh, I did mention to keep an eye on this area. A lot of times these little swarming areas uh, do tell a sign of uh, potentially strain up here on the fault system. And uh, 3.8 coming in off of that Elsinore fault system right here just at the southern end. Uh, about 7.30 my time here. Uh, not a big earthquake but uh, a little uptick. Uh, it was felt, uh, looks like, throughout the area of Southern California near El Centro, San Diego as well, uh, the Chula Vista area, and even uh, looks like Tijuana reported feeling just some light shaking uh, from this 3.8 that struck uh, just a few hours ago. Uh, so kind of keeping an eye on this area, seeing if uh, anything picks back up. Right now, the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault looks pretty quiet. There's no major swarms on it or around it. Uh, just that scattered activity in that 3.8, a little bit further to the southwest here. One earthquake off the coast here of the Baja California region from yesterday, uh, 2.1. Let's see what else we have here. New Mexico kicking in a little bit of earthquake activity. It looks like late last night at 3.6. Coming in just off the Rio Grande. A couple, couple earthquakes out there, actually. Um, let's see what we got. I'm kind of curious to see what's out there. Doesn't look like there's any type of um, pumping operations out here. I know there's definitely some faults uh, that sit up against these mountain ranges. More than likely, that's kind of what those are. Um, what is it called? The... Sakuro Canyon Fault, uh, a couple different fault systems out here. Either way, 3.6 and a 2.7 in that area. Also out inside of uh, Pecos, Texas region, some movement continuing overnight and of course yesterday as well. Uh, throughout Oklahoma, not a whole lot going on. Uh, New Madrid zone got a 2.4 over the past uh, 30 days or so. Let's check out the map got about 38 earthquakes <clears throat> somewhat of a an uptick a little uptick along the new madrid seismic zone uh nothing big just kind of this activity just kind of re reassures our um, belief that this fault system is still active and alive uh, the largest magnitude was a 3.2 just outside the tiptonville tennessee area earlier in the month or last month I should say so um, just kind of watching that as well sometimes these uh, earthquakes they pop up from time to time eastern portion of the country pretty quiet not a whole lot going on out there in that area and down here near Panama we did see a 5.0 coming in this morning it looks like that's uh, and just in the bay in this little area here about 48 kilometers deep uh, on the plate boundary it looks like between the uh, Cocos Plate and the um, Caribbean area South America region got some activity uh, looks like into the uh, Chile area 
majority of those from yesterday it looks like but a 4.3 somewhat deep here into the Prue Chile Trench 111 kilometers for that 4.3 see what we got for uh, activity in the smaller department here with the earthquakes um, not a whole lot uh, not a huge cluster like we were looking at here over the past couple days but still some activity um, kicking up in that region looks like there was a another four pointer into the area of Baja California region that is showing up here on the map as uh, somewhat of a newer quake along with that 3.8 further north so these are not the same earthquakes I've got one centered a little bit further south here it looks like along the Baja California coastline um, and USGS uh, looks like they left that out this isn't the one I believe they were uh, mentioning because that's a 2.1 it's four pointers a little bit further south here but they've been leaving out the earthquakes that strike out here in this region for some reason um, so um, yeah just pretty active looking at this globe here uh, a whole lot of movement globally uh, except for out here in the Atlantic currently only had a looks like a 5.3 mid-Atlantic Ridge but things definitely super active out here along the Pacific plate and specifically this area uh, runs up here across the adjacent plates and the Philippines super active all right, uh, let's go ahead and check out the big island of Hawaii. I think that's kind of a, a big top story right now. Continual eruption there of Mauna Loa. That, uh, let's check it out here and see what we got. Uh, I know the lava flow there uh, that's heading down from the northeastern uh, rift zone is slowing down a little bit. It's kind of uh, reaching a level of... of uh, level ground we're not really seeing a whole lot of advancement currently in the uh, forward progress department let's see what we got let's go to the latest <clears throat> latest update here real quick and this one was put out uh, just about nine o'clock here on this Thursday the uh, northeast rift zone eruption of Mauna Loa continues with two active fissures feeding lava flows down slope looks like fissure three remains the dominant source of the largest lava flow uh, it is traveling to the north towards the Daniel K Highway Saddle Road, but has, but have reached, has reached relatively flatter ground and has slowed down significantly as expected. So the advancement of the largest flow slowed over the past 24 hours to a rate of 0 0.025 miles per hour. So that's a uh, 40 meters per hour slowed down significantly. Um, as of 7 a.m. today, the flow front is about 3.4 miles from the Daniel K Highway. Advance rates may be highly variable over the coming days and weeks due to the way lava is emplaced on the flat ground. So you're going to get that swelling uh, and just building up of the, uh, the lava. But eventually, uh, it should continue to advance uh, northward. Uh, let's see here. At the rate observed over the past 24 hours, the earliest lava flow might be expected to reach the highway, the Daniel K Highway, is one week. That's what they're stating right here. However, there are many variables at play, so we'll keep an eye on that for sure. Fisher 4 is still active with lava flows moving towards the northeast at a rate of 0 0.04. Um... Looks like uh, seismic monitoring detects tremor, continual activity there in the location of the currently active fissures. This indicates that magma is still being supplied and activity is likely to continue as long as we see this signal. Uh, currently no active lava within the caldera itself in the southwest rift zone is not erupting. So things still kind of kicking up here on the, uh, on the area. Uh, looks like this has this been updated November 23rd this looks like it's from uh, still from yesterday but it kind of gives you a general idea where, where the uh, fissures are and the direction of the lava heading towards the uh, Daniel K highway up here 
Saddle Road, but uh, they're saying that it could reach about a week or so. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, let's see here. Let's check out space weather real quick, and then we'll jump off here. We did have a uh, M flare kick up out of the blue last night uh, from our sunspot here, 3152. Decided to um, throw off a little M flare, and um, it didn't really wasn't really expecting that. Uh, it's not really super complex there in order uh, to produce a significant flare, but somehow it managed to uh, kick off a, a low grade M flare last night I believe it was around the M 1.1 or so since then we've seen uh, declining activity but with a uh, looks like a sea flare within the last hour there is a pretty large sunspot region coming around the bend on the southeastern and also the northeastern side uh, this guy looks huge uh, a giant sunspot and there's all sorts of dynamic um, um, magnetic structures with within this uh, the field there so we'll, we'll wait for that to kind of come around see if this uh, is going to look as cool as I think it is it's pretty huge looking um, yeah not numbered yet but uh, we'll wait for that to be numbered here soon and um, let's see what we got here did we ever reach G1 last night Looks like, um, yeah, we did reach KP index there a couple times there of, of the uh, G1 class storming, KP index of 5. Still kind of seeing some elevated conditions here over the last few hours. That is expected to continue, it looks like, today and tomorrow possibly with the higher latitudes. Seen a pretty good shot there of the auroras from that uh, coronal hole that had been facing us. This one right here, pretty large one. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, they put out an update this morning. Uh, the beginning of December, we'll see a potential influx of sunspots. Whew. A new active region is now beginning to turn into view off the southeast limb and was the source of a number of minor sea flares on Wednesday. Uh, in addition to this, old regions 3140, 3141, and 3145 from earlier in November are about to turn back into view from behind the northeastern limb. We will begin to see what remains of these regions during the next 48 hours. Wow. So those guys, those uh, those sunspots that were uh, back there in November, the large sunspot activity group, is coming back around the bend for another another uh, view. I got my eye on this one right here. This looks pretty uh, pretty dynamic for sure. A little bitty sunspot down here. I don't know. Do they have that one named yet? Not really. He should be named here pretty soon, accordingly to the uh, sunspot number. All right, folks, have a good day. Um, I'm going to get out here and uh, maybe rake some leaves. I don't know. we got a lot of leaves all over the place thanks to the wind and the rain right now. Uh, my car is pretty much covered in it. We don't have snow. No snow here in the Valley of California, but they got quite a bit up in the mountains and uh, a lot more snowfall on the way here in California, so we're definitely needing that looking forward to it uh, we need it to uh, replenish our our um, drought stricken state here unfortunately we have 5.2 there on the java trench not for sure if the usgs showed that or not yeah it looks like they did from uh earlier this morning either way definitely active out there folks stay safe um you know a whole lot going on seems like things are really picking up all over the place currently have a good one we'll be back a little bit later on this evening unless something drastic happens take care we'll catch you guys a little bit later on peace out